Hello everyone and welcome to the Quillen Positions webinar on tasking. In this session we are going to go over the process of completing a task. To do this you're going to click on the task list tab on the horizontal toolbar and as you can see this page is defaulted to my active tasks. These are tasks that you or any team that you are assigned to are responsible for completing. You can also change the view by clicking on the black arrow in the drop down box and choosing another view. Current patient active will pull in all of the active tasks that are assigned to the patient who is pulled into the patient banner. Now some of you may also have other task lists assigned to you depending on your particular office's workflow. For example, if you work at the front desk and your office is set up so that all appointment referrals are sent to everyone at the front desk, then you may also have a task list called OBGYN appointment team. So your views here will vary depending on your office's workflow. Now as you can see we have Diana Allscript pulled into the patient banner and we're going to take a look at the tasks that are due on her so that we can show you a variety of different task types. We want to explain these columns here first. The P column stands for priority. Now there are three different levels of status which can be assigned to a task. And Let's go ahead and highlight immunization administration by clicking on it once and then we're going to click on the details box so that we can show you where this field is populated. In the priority field on the task detail screen there's a drop down box and you can choose either ASAP, routine, or urgent. The urgent category will give you the red star, ASAP will give you the yellow triangle, and routine, which is the default for all tasks, um, leaves this field blank. Now the next column, D, stands for delegated. Certain tasks can be delegated to another person. If this is the case, a Y will appear here in this column. The next column tells you the type of the task, followed by the patient's name, who the task is assigned to, who it was created by, and when it was created. The status column should be active if you are on the current patient active screen. The ID number is the next field and this due column will display a red frowny face if the task is overdue. And the last field has the medical record number, of course. Now we want to go ahead and show you some of the buttons on the bottom of the screen. Because we already have immunization administration highlighted, we're going to start with this one. And to work this task, you can either double click on the task itself or highlight it by clicking once and then clicking the go to button. The go to button will actually take you to the area in all scripts where you will need to be in order to complete the task. Since this is an immunization, it pulls up the immunization details screen and from here you can add in um, the information such as the location of the injection, the dosage, the expiration date, and so forth. Notice also that on this, on this uh, field you have two tabs, record administration and order entry. If you click on the order entry, you can also include um, specific instructions to the pharmacy and uh, you can also change the expiration date here. So once you've filled these fields out, you're going to go ahead and click OK and will automatically be taken back to the task list and as you can see, the task for the immunization has disappeared because you have completed that. So let's go ahead and click on the medical complaint task next. This is a phone call that needs to be returned, and as you can see, the Go To button is grayed out. This is because there's no place to really go in order to complete this particular task type. For telephone messages, you're going to click on the Details button in order to pull up the details of the phone call. All of the information that you need to return the patient's call should be listed in the Comment History box. And if you have any comments that you want to add, you can add them over here on this uh, field on the left-hand side called the comment field. When you're finished with that, you can just click OK. Again, we go back to our task list, and this time you'll notice that the task did not disappear, it's still there. And this is because all phone calls need to be copied to a patient's note before they are considered complete. So to do this, we're going to click on Copy to Note, and a note selector box will appear. 
The visit type should automatically be defaulted to nurse telephone note and the specialty should also be defaulted in. So from here we're just going to click OK and this will pull up the, um, the note itself. Generally on this you shouldn't have to input any further information. Um, all this is doing is copying the task to the patient's chart. However, if you do want to add additional information, you're just going to click in the section on the bottom here, which is called the Note Accumulator, type whatever additional information you want to add, and then you're just going to hit Save and Close. Now, as you see, when we've gone back to the task list, that particular task has disappeared because you have completed it. These Finish Note tasks are actually for the physician. Um, this is just a task letting them know that they need to go in and complete one of their notes and possibly sign off on it. We aren't going to go over those as, as those won't apply to you. So let's go ahead and look at the Schedule task next. Now here, because we are still going to be using Experior, this type of task will work a little differently from the ones that we've done before. Again, you're going to click on the Go To button or double click on the task itself and this will pull up your order details screen. Now the physician or nurse should have filled in the name of the provider that they want the patient to see and the date that they want them to be seen. Um, we have not done this on this test one so we'll just go ahead and pull in a provider here show you how this is done. We'll pull in one of our fake Allscripts physicians. And you can set the uh, the time that you want the patient to come in. We can go ahead and schedule it for a different date. Now, basically this, in, this information should have already been filled in by the physician. You will pull this screen up and then you will um, go ahead and schedule the patient's appointment with this information in Experior as you currently do. Now if it's an external physician and they are referring the patient to somebody outside of MEAC, then again you will follow the workflow that you currently use. So this is basically just an information screen for you to tell you um, who and when to schedule the patient. Um, we will click OK, and as you can see, because we aren't really following all scripts protocol on this, the task still exists in the task list view. So to close this out, we're just going to click on the Done button, and then it goes away. Okay, we want to go over some of the other buttons on the bottom of the page here. Um, let's highlight one of these notes just so that they, uh, they come up. The Reply button which actually this one is grayed out on this particular task type. The reply button allows you to reply to a task sent to you by another user. Now as you can see this is only available on certain task types. I believe telephone messages is one of them. and Of course we've just gotten rid of that so we can't show that to you. But um, if, if that particular button is not grayed out then you can reply to the person who sent you this task. The reassign button allows you to reassign a task to someone else. Remove allows you to remove a task if it was entered in error. And as you can see, this box will pop up and it'll ask you for a reason why you're going to remove it. Um, removing the task will remove it from the current patient active screen and from your My Tasks screen. But you can look at the current patient all and you will see the, the task is there and that it was removed and the reason for the removal. So we're just going to cancel out of that. But you, you can remove a task if something goes in in error. The Print List button allows you to print all of your tasks. Now if you do not have a specific task highlighted on the page and you do a print list, it's going to print the task details for all of your tasks. If you do have one highlighted, then it will only print that particular task. The Print Task button only allows you to print a highlighted task. On the left hand side of the page, you can also mark a task as being in progress. Now this is recommended if you are a part of a team so that two people don't begin working on a task at the same time. And that's basically it for the task list. We hope that this has been helpful and as always if you have any questions or comments please feel free to email us. Thanks everyone and have a great day.